All right, what's good? Welcome into the show. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and as always, no matter where you are, how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. On the docket, has the Philadelphia Eagles draft strategy been leaked? We're gathering more intel on what the Eagles might do in the 2024 NFL draft coming up at the end of this month in just a couple of Thursdays. Before we dive into all of this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Because we are going to be live for every pick, every day, all seven rounds of the 2024 NFL Draft right here on Eagles Now. It's very simple. Lock us in, hit that sub button, and as always, go Birds. Today's program is also sponsored by 8sleep. If you want to improve your sleep, make sure you do it with 8sleep. $200 off their new pod cover in addition to free shipping. If you use that link at the bottom of your screen, 8sleep.com slash chat sports let's first set the foundation by taking a gander at all the philadelphia eagles draft selections coming up in the draft from detroit eagles first on the clock round one pick 22 overall they have two second round picks which i think are extremely valuable 50 and 53 no third round pick but back on the clock round four pick 120 from pittsburgh that's from that Kenny Pickett trade, round five, 161 from Tampa Bay, and then three compensatory picks to round things out for the Birds, round five, 171, round five, 172, and their final pick, round six, 210. We know that Howie Roseman is really aggressive, so I would be very surprised if this list of Eagles draft picks does hold firm. As for the Eagles draft strategy, this is my best read given what Roseman has done as the team's general manager since he's taken over and then got that job back after Chip Kelly banished him out of the building pretty much. Howie Roseman is always a player to get aggressive, to try to improve his football team, and if he has to move up, and if it makes sense for the organization, both with the trade and with the player that they covet, he's going to look into those opportunities. The Eagles also like to trade back to gather picks. Could that be a strategy, let's say, at 50 and 53, when you have those two second rounders, but no third, and you want to pick up a third rounder because you like how the board is falling going into the final day of the draft? The typical strategy for Philadelphia, best player available, they have learned from, let's say, the Jalen Rager pick, drafting for need instead of best player available. And we know that Howie Roseman really likes to fortify the trenches along the offensive line and the defensive line. My biggest Eagles draft needs, there are many of them, even though I really like the construction of this roster and what the Birds have done throughout this offseason. Cornerback, offensive line depth, safety, linebacker, wide receiver three, backup running back, edge rusher, and interior defensive lineman. Now, ESPN gathered and shared some intel from the local front to McManus, who's on the beat covering the Eagles for ESPN, as well as the perspective from a national draft expert and NFL insider on what the Eagles could do come draft day. Let's first take a look at the local spin here from Tim McManus. He thinks Philadelphia could go with the cornerback position in the first round. He said cornerback. The defense finished second to last in passing yards, 253 per game last year, and passing touchdowns, giving up 35. They need to bolster the position both for the upcoming season and for the future with Darius Slay, 33 years old, James Bradbury, 31 in August, both on the backside of their careers. While younger cornerbacks on the roster, like Isaiah Rogers coming off that gambling suspension, and Keely Ringo offer some promise, selecting one of the top prospects at the position might be just what the doctor ordered, ordered excuse me, for this defense. And outside of the cornerback position, you look at what the Eagles have been able to accomplish in free agency so far. Howie has gotten a lot younger on the defensive side of the football. The Eagles were top five as far as the oldest defensive units in the NFL in 2023. They're three years younger on that side of the ball going into 2024, and they're set to get even younger with some rookie draft picks set to join this team who do get drafted by the Eagles. And Howie is set that obviously you have to find your franchise quarterback. The Eagles did that with Jalen Hurts. They paid him. 
But his team building strategy outside of finding a quarterback, build up the offensive line, build up the defensive line. And specifically, when constructing and fortifying the roster on the defensive side of the rock, he likes to build up the line and then he looks at cornerback as the second biggest priority after the defensive line on the defense. But you take a thought and a look at the Eagles draft history here, especially with Howie Roseman running this front office, and then in the early 2000s when Joe Banner and Andy Reid were running this front office, the Eagles draft history at the cornerback spot in the first round is pretty interesting and fascinating because the Eagles have not taken a corner in the first round since 2002 when they drafted Lido Shepard out of Florida. His career short-lived as far as how long he played in the NFL, but he ended up being a Pro Bowl and an All-Pro level player for those Jim Johnson defenses in the early 2000s and was a big part of their success. And when you look at the Eagles roster right now, I don't think there's any doubt. This is the biggest need for now and in the future because defenses have an increasing expectation to build their rosters in a certain way to stop what offenses are increasingly doing, and that's throwing the football. And right now, the sequel secondary at the cornerback spot is simply just not good enough. And I like the high-end corners in this draft class. My cornerback big board for the 2024 draft class, Quinian Mitchell is my favorite corner out of Toledo. I know he played at a smaller school, but he had 19 pass breakups last year, and his pro football focus numbers were terrific. I like the length, the speed, the physicality, and the swagger. Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama, I think is better than his teammate, Terrion Arnold. I think he's more of a proven product right now. He's coming off that Jones fracture, but I love his ball skills, his toughness, and his dog mentality. He's my second favorite corner, followed by his teammate in Arnold. Nate Wiggins, 4-3, 40-yard dash, extremely quick, but I worry about the lack of bulk to his size. And Cooper DeGene, I think that he's going to be able to play corner, but I think he's going to play safety. I think he's going to be a chess piece for whichever team drafts him. I think he's a total possibility for the Eagles at number 22 overall, and he's a big-time playmaker. A lot of his interceptions at Iowa went back for pick sixes. I really, really like the player, but he's my fifth-ranked corner in this draft class. Here's the national perspective from Matt Miller of ESPN after we got the local insight from Tim McManus. He thinks the Eagles are going to go offensive line. And this is what he said. I continue to hear in conversations with scouts around the league that general manager Howie Roseman could look to solidify the right tackle spot early in the draft, even in round one. Tyler Guyton has spent time in the pre-draft process training with current Eagles right tackle Lane Johnson. He also went to Oklahoma, by the way. The Eagles started planning ahead at center before Jason Kelsey's retirement with Cam Jurgens and drafting Guyton, who started just 14 games in college, would allow him to learn and develop under Johnson and famed offensive line coach Jeff Stoutland. It's time to pop up our poll question for today's show. What would you rather do if you were in this front office and you were Howie Roseman? Would you rather draft a cornerback, draft an offensive lineman, or go with a different position? And if that is other, then I want you to list what that position is down in the comment section right now. Coming up next, we are only ramping up on today's Eagles. Now, Eagles draft strategy leaked part two because there's a lot more to get to. First, today's show is sponsored by 8sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling technology that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. I love 8sleep for a multitude of reasons. I know how healthy I am because I get good sleep, and when I don't get a quality night's sleep, I'm just not feeling as good. I'm sluggish brain fog, and I just don't feel my normal self. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of the sleep and rise in the morning, and that's what the pod cover does. It can allow you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees, and in addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. 
I'm telling you right now, there's no better way to improve your day-to-day life better than sleep. And the easiest way to do that, the Eat Sleep Pod 3, you put the device right next to your bed, you control the temperature right from the power of your own phone, and if you use our link for the Intelligent Sleep System, 8sleep.com slash chat sports, you get $200 off. In addition to free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep, invest in the rest that you deserve with the 8sleep pod. Let's continue to do some scouting on Tyler Guyton before we get to some talk about Cooper DeGene. Tyler Guyton, interesting upbringing. He grew up playing a lot of basketball. He thought that was going to be his sport of choice. He was recruited as an athlete to go to TCU. Can you imagine a guy of this size just being recruited as an athlete? Goes to show you just the special ability that he has with that frame and body type. He hopped in with some tight ends at TCU, moved to offensive line. His first collegiate start, he actually played H-back for TCU. Now what this means is that Guyton is a really good athlete. And at the offensive tackle spot, you're looking for good athletes who have that quick first step to go back and pass coverage, who can get out in space on some of those pool blocks to block defensive players to pave open running lanes for your running backs, quarterbacks, and wide receivers. And the Eagles love these types of athletic freaks, especially at the offensive line. Jordan Mailata, former rugby player. Lane Johnson used to play quarterback and tight end. Jason Kelsey really started a new wave of teams taking chances on centers who were well under 300 pounds because he ran that sub-540 yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine. So the Eagles really like taking chances on these types of players. And when I scout Tyler Guyton, he stands at 6'7", 322 pounds. We're talking about a freak athlete here. And when I saw him at the NFL Scouting Combine, some of these offensive linemen, you see they're pudgy and they have that hula hoop waist just going over their belt line. That's how offensive linemen used to be made up way back in the day, especially when you were going up against some nose tackles who were just there to take up a lot of real estate, but now you have to go up against defensive tackles like Chris Jones and Aaron Donald and Fletcher Cox, and now teams building up their offensive linemen on the interior, on the outside, they want really good athletes here. And Guyton, light and balanced in pass protection, 15 career starts, you can tell because he is a little bit raw, comfortable on the right side. I don't think he's ever going to take over on the left side. That's okay. You have Jordan Mailata there, and you just sign him to a contract extension. And if he stays motivated, if this player stays healthy, he has tremendous upside. Now to Cooper DeGene here, a fan favorite for a lot of Eagles fans out there. Peter Schrager, NFL Network, Good Morning Football, just released his first mock draft this week. And he has the Eagles taking Cooper DeGene. This is of note here because Schrager has spent weeks on the phone talking with general managers, talking with head coaches all across the league, gathering some important intel. And he's one of the more plugged-in NFL personalities in media right now. So I put stock in what he has to say, and he has Coop Regine going number 22 overall to Philadelphia. DeGene had an outstanding college career, Schrager said, and showed out at his private workout. He could play corner, he could play safety, and as a special teams Swiss Army knife. Is 22 overall too rich? Maybe. But I can see him in an Eagles uniform. Now, other NFL mock drafts have DeGene going later. They have DeGene even going in the teens. I get really intrigued by the thought of Vic Fangio using Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Cooper DeGene as chess pieces and Swiss Army knives for this defense. Vic Fangio can get very creative with how he utilizes players, putting them in a position to succeed, to maximize their strengths. And that's what he could do with C.J. Gardner-Johnson and Cooper DeGene just providing a lot of different looks, a lot of different formations for opposing offenses to have to game plan against. And speaking of strengths, Cooper DeGene has a lot of them. He's a freak athlete. I watched some basketball tape of him. My man had some serious bounce, and he can play a variety of techniques at that cornerback spot. I think he anticipates well. He backpedals well. He played quarterback in high school. He credits his anticipatory skills at defensive back, just making a read for where quarterbacks are going and then making a beat on the football because he played quarterback in high school, so he knows what the quarterbacks are thinking internally. 
what's interesting here is that DeGene had seven career interceptions at Iowa. He returned three of them for touchdowns. I'm not saying he's Ed Reed by any means, but has that Ed Reed quality that when he gets his hands on the football, because he does have special teams value as a returner, and because he's a 4-4, 40-yard dash guy and a really good athlete, he's a threat to take it to the crib. And I think that his role at the NFL level could be a versatility role like Trent McDuffie. And I thought that Steve Spagnuolo utilized him perfectly in the Super Bowl. Corner blitzes, hybrid linebacker, slot corner, just using him as a weapon. You know how basketballs become positionless? Cooper DeGene can be a positionless player at the NFL level. The weaknesses and the concerns. He is coming off a fractured fibula. He does give up initial separation at times. There are questions for people who don't like positionless players. Is he a corner? Is he a safety? Some defenses are very rigid with how they want to use players. They want to use them in one spot. And he can get a little bit handsy in coverage. That does lead to some penalties thrown. But you go back to the athleticism here. And he did not test at the NFL scouting combine because of that broken leg. He did have that private workout that Peter Schrager noted in his mock draft. He scored a 989 on the Math Bomb Relative Athletic Score on a scale of 0 to 10. Translation, fantastic athlete. Stands at 6 feet, 203 pounds, 16 reps of 225 on the bench press. Great vertical leap at 38 and a half inches and a 4-4-3 40-yard dash. He's certainly twitchy, 31-inch arms as well. So your one-word reaction to the Eagles drafting Cooper DeGene would be what? For me, it's versatility. You share your thoughts and your one-word reaction with us down in the comments section right now.